time to play some Too Many Bones. Guess I'm gonna do this one on my own. Of course you are! And I'm coming with you! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Justin from Books, Bricks, and Boards. Played a few games of Shadows of Brimstone over the last few weeks. Uh, getting back into that game in a big way. But today, I thought I would play a little Too Many Bones. So today we are going to start playing through Undertow uh, solo. Uh, played through the base box, Tyrants, all except for Gendrix, which I just cannot beat solo. If you've got any ideas for that, please put a comment down in the, in the uh, comments section and maybe I'll give that another run sometime. But I decided I'm going to play Duster and going to start off against Barnacle. Um, so I'm going to grab a few of the attack dice, I'm going to grab some defense dice, and I will tell you this is my first time in a long time playing Duster, and I don't think I've ever played against Barnacle. So um, I am playing on the... Uh, green horn mode, I get two extra health and an extra skill die uh, for that. So we're going to start off with day one, special encounter one. Breathe, chaos is everywhere. Guards, mechs, chaos, more mechs, more guards, deep breath. It's time to move, but nothing could be more dangerous. The nearby surroundings are unknown, but there's a guard just up ahead with his back turned. A quick move, and anything he's holding could probably be stolen and put to good use. Maybe a few minutes to get the lay of the land would be beneficial, but the opportunity for extra wares would be lost. Deep breath. Time <laughs> So I can either find a lookout perch and be able to reveal uh, a baddie from each stack and, and get rid of them if I want to. Or I could uh, pickpocket and end up with three loot instead of one loot. Three loot seems potentially broken if I get something good. But those skill points are almost irreplaceable. You know what? I am going to go ahead and pickpocket. I think that is what Duster would do. So we're going to get three loot. Got a power cell. A programmable defibrillator. And a McCalabash pipe. So... I can re-roll any two dice twice with the power cell. Uh, the defibrillator is completely worthless to me. Um, oh, nope, because it has a section. If I'm KO'd, I can revive with two hit points, so it's not worthless to me. That will be good, but it's single use. And then the McCalabash pipe, roll a d6, Apply a result to any lock or of equal or lesser value that any gear lock is working on. Bypass that lock for free. Hmm. Wow. So that's going to make Trove Loot better for me. Because I'm going to be able to roll a d6 and potentially just unlock it. Um, I also get one progress point. So I will keep track of those down here. We're going to move on to day two. Day two. Fish. Oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> Forgot. I get to look at my stacks. Okay. Mischief one. I'm not too worried about mischief with this character, so I'm going to leave that there. Traps Blind Strike 1. I, think I do think I'm going to move him to the back. And then I get to reveal the next one, too, as part of that last card. And it's the same thing. Well. So I guess I'll leave these because I've already looked at them. 
And in the mechanical, no, this is the Krellin, sorry. Poison two, one attack die, one defense dice. Five hit points, wow. I don't know much about Krellin, so I'm gonna assume that there's probably even worse ones in there. Leave that there. And equipment bleed. Hmm. Yeah, we'll leave those there. I, I don't have the 20 point stack out because I don't think I'm gonna use it, so I left it in the box. If I have to, I'll take a peek at it um, when that comes up. I do still get my rest phase between adventures, so I am going to go ahead and do another lookout. And since I got a five, I'm going to go ahead and move him to the back and hope I get something better next go. All right, so day two. Uh, the sewer is now miles back, and the river is just ahead. As luck would have it, a perfectly serviceable raft is tethered at the bank to a young Stadru sapling. Its owner is nowhere in sight, but hopefully he won't mind that his vessel was commandeered for a good cause. There's still the question of what to do about the ripe-smelling gearlock clothes, though. The more time spent washing up at the shore, the greater the chances of a mech assault, but the Seabrum's Fierce, fearsome Krellin can detect rancid smells from miles away. So I guess I'm going to choose to either be fighting Sebron uh, Krillin or Max. What is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. So I'm either going to, I'm going to do two baddie points, including Krellin, or two baddie points, including mechs, um, which actually won't matter either way because I'm only at day two and I'm one, one solo gear lock. Um, so I'm only going to get two one point baddies either way. So it doesn't much matter what choice I make. So we're going to get two baddies. And we're going to grab some health for them. I think I just bypassed a step there, unfortunately. I should have put myself on the board. And one neat thing about um, Duster is Duster can start in any position on the board. So two, is that right? Because I've not played against the monsters in the Undertow set, I had to look up Blind Strike and Dodge. So Blind Strike means <clears throat> that this guy is going to deal one damage to the strongest adjacent enemy at the beginning of each turn. And then Dodge means his hit points can't be reduced by attack dice, which is fine because I've got the bleed from the dagger. So I just need to use my dagger on this guy then. Um, yeah, it doesn't much matter. We're going to start here. Like I said, I think I should have placed myself first. I'll have to look at the order of operations on that again between battles here. Okay, so um, this guy is going to go at a two. And this guy is going to go at a four. And 
Duster's going at a five. We're on round one, so Duster's gonna go ahead and go. Got three decks, so Duster is going to attack twice and use a defense die. Three damage. One, two, three. That's a dead minion. And I get a defense die. And I took out the one that could knock out my defense die with mischief. So then one, two. Go on to move round two. Duster is going to move one, two. Third point of dex is going to be to use the dagger. And gets a bleed token there. Got the wrong one. So, beginning of his turn, he takes a point of bleed. At the start of his turn, he also deals one damage of blind strike to me. Uh, which actually I can block with my defense die, which is what I'm going to do. It's not true damage. Yeah. And then he attacks, which does a damage which I cannot block. Which means at the beginning of round three, Nightshade is going to come in. And Nightshade starts on a gearlock melee position. So we're going to have him start right there. And starts at the top of the initiative. So Nightshade's going to go first, round three. Nightshade does not have a backup plan. Oh, can't take away with dice, though, because he's got dodge. Um... So Nightshade, I guess, uh, we're just going to have him run away. Then we're going to have one, two, three. Yep. Uh, is there any way Nightshade? Nope. Anyways. Um, so... Beginning of his turn, he's going to take bleed. He's going to die. So, didn't need to worry about that anyway. So, I've defeated the two baddies. And that means that I get um, two skill points and a loot. Let's get the loot. Ah, a harpoon pistol. Choose a non-tyrant baddie on the battle mat and place it on a position adjacent to you. If this baddie is a Krellin, it is instantly defeated. Ah, that could actually come in pretty handy when defending the raft from damage. I think I like that. Okay. So now I got two skill points to distribute. Let's take a look and see what we've got. I would like to get to the Vibro Blade. Not sure that I need to get there this quickly though. Throwing knives would add a little bit of extra flexibility too. By the way, these um, Gearlock dice trays are really great even if you do not have the Trove chest. Um, they have really made setup uh, and storage much more effective. So I do like those. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just do that. I'm gonna get the throwing knives so that I can also get the vibro blade because I will use the throwing knives, but I am desperately needing some more dexterity. Uh, but can't have it all, all at the same time. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, between adventures, I have a choice. 
Um, so I've taken a point of damage. If I leave the point of damage on Duster, then Nightshade will start in the battle, which is pretty good. If I don't, I could heal either Nightshade, which is fully health, or myself. Um, if I don't heal anybody, I could scout again and see if I can um, change that five point baddie or at least make sure it's one that I want to fight there. Um, I believe I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and heal up. That might not be the right play. We're on day three now, and we have two progress points. Need five to fight Barnacle. <clears throat> it's not pretty. Limbs blasted off, spinning gyroscopes exposed, and neuro wiring a smoking mess. But the darter mech is now mine. It was touch and go with my limited tech knowledge, but this nasty looking Frank dar Franken darter is beginning to spark and belch to life. It's alive. So many options. I could program it and mow my opponents down to size, or I could load it with explosives and blow the next camp to pieces. Maybe I could even ride it for some extra mobility. The possibilities are Hold endless. On. What is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of their women. Ugh. So that mech is mine. Batty points and add five batty points. Eee. So I have surprise. Um, so that's cool. Uh, place mech darter on the battle mat and use it as an ally for this battle. Use d6 to mark its initiative. Um, choose one extra skill for this darter before battle. I can either add an attack. Uh, I could make it a bomber, dealing three true damage to all adjacent units when I self-destruct it. Or I could bolster uh, during any Gearlock's move phase. It may board Darter if adjacent. While here, movement does not cost dex. At the end of each move phase, Gearlock must disembark adjacent to it. Does not cost dex. Well, I'm going to turn it into a bomber, because I think that seems cool. So let's find our darter. Mech darter. And we're going to shuffle. What there is to shuffle of these, there's not very many. Yes, self repair one and swap. Let's see what those do. Self repair at the start of the unit's turn, place defense dice totaling the number on it. So it gets one defense dice for free. And it starts with three auto defense. That's cool. And it's up to its uh, up to that stat and swap at the start end of this unit's turn. It will switch positions with the closest, strongest opposing units. Huh. Interesting. Let's see if I can keep it alive long enough for that all to matter. All right, so we got three of these guys. We one, two, three. And then a dragon grounder. Oh my goodness. All right, well, that's not gonna be fun. So the dragon grounder is gonna be number one. is melee. Man, 
That's gonna stink. Okay. These guys are. Targetable. All right, so just looked up the abilities, and this guy has one mind. He's a chimp halfwit, but uh, on his turn, all other beast baddies, that would be these two, get to roll one attack die. All right, well, let's place the initiative positions. This guy's going to be a five. Hopefully I can match that to go first. Get a bleed out there on him, maybe. I don't know that I want to get that close to him, though. Um, two was here. He's going to be a four. Three is this guy. He's a four. This other guy's a three. My Krellen is a four. He's considered an ally, so he is going to go ahead on ties. And then let's roll for Duster. And I got a three. Oh, well, that changes things. And these two guys are ranged. They won't be moving. This says on its turn, Darter may self-destruct dealing three true damage. So it doesn't say when on his turn. So I'm thinking what I might do is I might try if he survives long enough, which, yeah, he should. Um, I might place him here so that this guy can't get to him and attack. And then have him walk into here and self-destruct, which would take out both of these guys. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Because the only one that's going to go before him is going to be that guy. All right. And then, I believe, with my innate... Yeah. So, Duster can start on any position on the battle mat. So, I'm going to start right here. So, we're going to go round one, one, two. Krellen, or I'm sorry, the darter is going to go one, two. He's going to self-destruct, dealing three true damage to each of these guys. He's gone. Thanks, buddy. Um, so that took out number two, and it took out number four. Number three is going to attack and defend. It's going to do one point of damage, which is actually the best I could hope for, because that means that Nightshade's going to come in. 
and he got bones, uh, so he is untargetable next turn. And I just checked, Duster's dagger is actually not a targeting weapon. So, I'm sorry, not Duster's dagger, the throwing knives are not targetable. One, two. My third one, I'm gonna use my throwing knives here, dealing two damage. Okay. Round two, you can come in on any starting gear lock melee position. And thinking, ah, I should have rolled defense dice for this guy. Yeah, that changes things. That's what we're going to do. So the untargetable is until this unit's next turn. So, huh. If I attack him, he's just going to add his defense dice back. I can't attack him. I guess Nightshade is just a roadblock right now. Sad. All right, so we'll walk up and attack. Take off one of those. Now he will attack three of those. Four damage to Nightshade, so Nightshade's totally dead. But he rolled a bones on his defense, which means I only have to deal with this one defense die up here, even though the value is two. Um, hmm. I don't know that I thought this through very well. So that guy is gone. That guy's going to attack. And he's untargetable again. Great. One damage. <clears throat> okay, my turn. I don't have any more non-targeted damage. Um, I guess I'm going to roll a defense. Kind of like where I'm at position-wise. Actually, I could just move to here. So if he is targetable, yeah, I think I'll do that. So I got one dex left. I have one defense. <clears throat> uh, dead. Round three. This guy's gonna move two. This guy is gonna attack and defend. Okay, so he'll have one defense day on him. Takes out my defense. really need to hit, but I really need some defense. Let's look and see. Yeah, the 
this is one I'll use on the boss. Two attack, one defense. And we're going to power cell. Um, just going to reroll this one. Okay. So I got my two defense. I did get enough to knock that off and kill this guy. four. This could be a defibrillator use here in a second. So we're going to have him go this way because I get to choose. That gives me same options, I guess. He's going to attack me and he gets weakened as well. Oh, all right. So Take two damage. I lose my deal there. And I'm weakened twice. And weakened reduces my dex by two. So I've got one die I get to use because this guy has hit me. Yeah, I think I'm going to lose this encounter. I don't think there's any way around that. I don't understand how I could not. I am going to get my bleed token on him. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my power cell to reroll that. All right. So we've got a bleed. Only one. Uh, beginning of round five, he'll take a bleed. Then he's going to attack me. Uh, I die, but my defibrillator revives me with two HP. And I lose the status effect because I died. The question is, can I survive? I don't think I can survive long enough for it to matter. But, we'll see. Um, these two are gone now. <clears throat> One damage. Beginning of turn six, we each take a bleed, well, a, a exhaustion, and he takes another bleed, actually. Um, yeah. So he's going to get his full attack. There's no way I survived this. Two damage, yep, I'm dead. I think we might have made a mistake leaving the Shire, Pippin. Even with that awful roll, I'm still dead. Alright, so I have been defeated. Alright. Alright, on my recovery phase from my devastating failure. We'll put the failures right here for everybody to look at. On day three, uh, I had to choose to recover health because she was out. So Nightshade got knocked out, so he's got one hit point. Still have my Macalabash pipe and my harpoon pistol. I used the other two pieces of loot. So we're on day four. Entering the settlement, I can feel eyes on me. The hidden cave is full of paranoid gearlocks, wary looking and seemingly afraid to talk. They're building machinery and while no sentries watch, they appear to be working against their will. Seeing gearlocks in this region is bizarre, 
and they seem well aware they don't belong. Are they in hiding? Held under threat? Maybe the makeshift shanty at the back of the cave holds answers. Armaments are everywhere inside, perhaps for Nobulus's machines, even a working prototype stands awaiting for instruction. As the mechs crash through the walls with me in their sights, I attach one of the more advanced pieces Hold to on. my arm. What is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. Seems like a weapon of sorts. The prototype arm successfully fuses with your arm temporarily. Batty points, including mechs. Um, so, your attack and defense stat are linked and can be used for either stat. Ooh, that doesn't really help me. Well, I guess it could make me more defensive. Seems like a controller of some sort. Wait, how do I pause? I need to invert the y-axis in the settings. So, uh, batty points add abomination prototype to the bottom of the batty queue. At the end of each round, you may take a turn for the abomination prototype. Huh. I think I'm gonna do that. Let's see what we got. Abomination prototype. Self repair of two. Disruption of X. All right, well, I guess that's whenever he gets the bones. Oh. Make sure that I read that correctly. Yeah, so we go to the exhaustion rounds if he rolls a bones. That's interesting. All right. So he's at the bottom of the batty queue. Oh, I need to flip this over because we're in a cave. So we will fight this guy that I looked at. That's three of our points. Next one is gonna be another weakened enemy. That stinks. So he is melee. Weakened. Oh wait, that's Krellen. That's not right. That's not right. Mech is what I needed to add. So, this guy is gonna be number two. is melee and I believe for these guys I roll to see where they start I was correct uh, so this is going to this guy is gonna go to the three spots and I just read what assault does which makes his attack equal to his hit points so I need to drain his hit points and my abomination will come in at the in, or the beginning of the next round. Um, so we're gonna start here because I need to take him out. So uh, he's gonna go at a one, thankfully. And he's gonna go at a four. Hopefully I roll better for my initiative than I did last time. Five, that'll work. That'll work. Okay, so round one, I am going to pull out all the stops 
doing my vibro blade, my bleed die, and an attack die before he gets some defense worked up. Okay, so I just outright kill him, so I'm not going to use this. I'll keep that for later use. I do four damage. Dead. That's good. Um, so he's gone. And this guy is going to go one, two. And then he is going to attack in me and weaken me. Yep. So I've got a weak and one on me, which gives me two dice to work with. I'm going to use a defense and a bleed. Oh, wait. Uh, nope, can't do that yet. Round two. He comes in. Now, technically... Even though I'm controlling him, he is still a baddie. So he comes in at the bottom of the initiative track. And he would go to the first available lane. So he'd go here. Because he's a melee and he'll be in the one lane. Um, oh, and... Nightshade's going to come in. And Nightshade will come in at the top. So I may just step out and let these two do the work. I think that's the right play. Nightshade won't be able to do anything this turn, though. All right, so I've got two decks to work with. One, two. Nightshade did nothing. They're going to go for the most powerful. Ah, oh, that was dumb. Yep, that was dumb. But he missed, so they bailed me out with the bad die roll. And then I'll get to take a move with this guy. One, two. He adds one. Oh, I'm sorry, he has two. And then he attacks. And damage. <clears throat> ah, but he actually gets his own turn before I take my turn. Ah, I should have thought about that. So that would have actually been his turn. He would have done one and got his two, and then he would have came over here, and then I get my turn. Yeah, it still does one, so. But he would kill Nightshade. So whenever you take a turn for a baddie, they still get their own turn, so I'm still going to have to deal with him. I hadn't thought about that whenever I chose to take the controller. That might make things more difficult. Oh, well. So, um, next go, go ahead and put one ship under Nightshade for future. I am going to go ahead and do I'm going to do two attack dice here and then I'm going to do my throw my daggers over here. Eh, no, I'm not because he's got two armor there. And this is going to stink. I'm going to do a defense. Two attack dice here and a defense. So two kills him. That's good. And I get an armor, which is good. And I think I just have to just kind of drag him around the battlefield now. Yep, I think that's my only option. So he takes his turn. And he's going to attack me. I block it. Then I take my turn for him. One, two. And then I'm going to move over here. One, two. And that was actually turn three. 
now turn four. Let's see, he's going to go to here, here. I'm just going to roll a defense die. That's what I'll do. So, there's that. He takes his turn. I take my turn for him. Turn five. He takes his turn, or I take my turn, I sit. He takes his turn, I take my turn for him. I take a point, he takes a point. Next turn, I take a point. He takes a point, and eventually I'll take a point, and he'll take a point, and he's dead. All right, so we win that battle, just barely. I'm going to heal up during the rest phase. Puts me at five. I do get two skill points <clears throat> and another progress point. Puts me at three progress. Um, so with my two skill points, I definitely need some more decks, but I think I also need either a hit point or a defense die. I think I'm going to do a hit point because it doesn't take decks. Yeah. All right, so that is the end of day four. On to day five. All right, so we are ready for day five. And our encounter is Mech Ado About Hunting. It all tastes so gamey. The jungle teems with life, but none of it is at all. All that appetizing after roasting on a spit. Aiming carefully with my bow, I hope that perhaps this little beast tastes half as good as some gobby jerky. But my arrow bounces off of it with a loud metallic clank that not only alerts the mech I've attempted to feast upon it, but also activates an entire security system embedded in the foliage. Turrets, micro shields, and EMP grenades pop up from the ground. There are no alleys to be found, and the this... Security checkpoint looks to have been abandoned a while back, but thankfully, I can make use of these armaments. What is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. So, I've got the Tempest with EMP capitalized there, fighting four mech minions. Uh, I would have surprise if I did that. Uh, or the comedy of barriers, also fighting four uh, mech minions. Uh, Gearlock has a barrier that absorbs the first damage dealt by all baddies before removing death dice or buff HP for the entire battle. Wow. Huh. The first point of damage dealt by all baddies goes to my barrier. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to do just the four max, not the batty points and the four max. So I've got two left. Then I'm going to have to do some shuffling of the others because I've used the others. All right. I guess there's only five of them. 
in the game. So there and there. So, we've got the Mech Hound, uh, which has Disruption and Swap. And it is a melee. And this is going to be a land encounter. So, we're going to go here. This guy was my next one. The Spiderbot 4.0. He'll go in number two. He is arranged. He has three. Now we're gonna do this guy. He is a melee. He has self-repair and assault. He's the one I want to take care of first because that assault is pretty nasty. I'll have to see what equipment does. Ah, I need to roll a D6 for equipment when he appears on the battle mat. And we've got the Abomination prototype which I've ran into one other time. This time it'll be on their side instead of my side. Okay. And I added health, so I'm at six now. Initiative two. Let's see, this guy's at four. No, he's at one. This guy is at. Oh. Let's get this right, Justin. One. He's at three. He's at two. And then he's at three. Let's see where I'm at. I'm at five, so I'm going to be going first. Nightshade is going to start off of the map because I have not taken any damage. I do have my harpoon pistol that I could use to uh, position myself to have a baddie next to me. That might come in handy with this guy. I do need to roll to see what kind of upgrade they get. Number three, um, increase their uh, attack stat by one. So this guy actually has an attack of two. So I'm going to place this die on there so that I don't forget. He also does bleed. Ugh. I might need to take care of him first. Ugh. That is not good. Let's think about this. I can start on any space because I am Duster. Yeah, I think I'm actually, I'm gonna change up what I was gonna do. I'm gonna start here. That may be the bad a bad decision there, but I really need to kill this guy, and then I could maybe throw daggers at this guy. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. All right, so round one, I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do two attack and. One vibro blade. This goes away. And one defense against the spider bot. Okay, 
overkilled it a little bit. I did four damage and it only has three. Um, so I don't have to worry about bleed now, which is what I was concerned about with the spider bot. Because I feel like this, this mission may go the long haul. And I do have to remember that the first point of damage every turn from, or from every enemy for the whole battle is absorbed by my barrier. So we're going to go with this guy now. He self repairs up. Uh, it does point of damage, but it is blocked by my energy shield. Now we're going to go with this guy. He's going to come in. And oh, he'll swap too. Yeah. So he's going to self repair up. So that is going to be absorbed here. This guy, I can choose because he'll be the same distance. I'm going to put him here because that gives me more of an escape route. Okay, round two. Oh, and he had self repair one. I'm going to need some more of these. Okay, round two. I am going to attack the abomination with two attack dice and a bleed die. Got my bleed. I knock that down to one. Get a defense die. And I get my first bones. Which I'm not super familiar with her. I looked at it. That's my turn. So we're going to go into his turn. Takes a point of bleed damage. He'll self repair up to two and he'll attack me. Uh, my energy shield blocks that. So then this guy, as he should have done this last time, he's going to swap. I think I forgot to do that last time. He's gonna attack me. Okay, so one is just uh, blocked by the energy shield, one is blocked by my defense die, and one is damage taken. Which means that night Nightshade is gonna come out next turn. But, it's, it may not matter because we're going to have four attack dice coming at us because I didn't do anything with this guy here. Yeah, he's just, he just kills me. Uh, no, actually, yeah, he does. Yeah, so two, four, five, six. One of it is blocked by my energy shield. Five. All right, so I had my failure, but my next encounter is a special encounter, Tentacular Spectacular. Uh, it hadn't seemed to take much effort. The massive tentacle simply gave the raft a light shove, and it was beached in an instant. Barnacle seems to be more intelligent than the legends and songs give him credit for. 
He's directed the skiff right into the middle of another skirmish already in progress. A slew of other Cretans are searching the area for Bar Barnacle's legendary treasure. They are headed for the raft. Surrounded and outnumbered, this well, could hurt. What is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. So my choice is a land encounter with batty points and add two one-point baddies per gear lock in uh, party to the top of the batty queue. So we are actually on day six now. Or two tentacles per gear lock. Uh, I'm definitely going to take the two tentacles per gear lock. Take, two tentacles seems uh, to be a much better deal, but it is a water encounter then. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so one HP on the first one and two HP on the second one. And I believe we roll to see where they start. So he's going to start there, and since he wouldn't go there, he'll go to the next one up, which is two. Okay. Submerge and careless. Careless means he does a point of damage to himself if he gets a bones. Submerge. Ah, so he randomly moves. So, let's go ahead. Ah, and I could use the harpoon pistol. I guess these are considered tyrant baddies because they're part of the tyrant. Um, yeah, we're going to play it that way because that's the least cheap way to do it, I guess. If you think the harpoon pistol can be used on the tentacles, uh, put a note down in the comments. So we're going to go ahead and get some initiative dice. Um, so this guy is going to go at and this guy is going to go at 2 and Duster is going to go at 3 but she wins the tie so I think what we end up doing we stab this guy, we throw the dagger at this guy and we hope we just kill everybody in the first round so that will make up for some of the bad draws I've got on monsters. So we're going to use those two die and this these two die. Okay, so the two is going to kill that guy and then the four is going to kill this guy. So that was just a super simple encounter there. Um, the encounters can be very swingy. Um, so sometimes you get a draw where it is nearly impossible to win. And sometimes like that, you get a draw where it is nearly impossible to lose. So let's see what I get. I'm going to get two skill points for that and a progress point, which is important right now because I'm at one, two, three, four progress points. I'm on day, this next day will be day seven. So I have to win this to get to my five progress pr points so that on day eight I can fight Barnacle before I run out of time. So um, let's look at what options I've got. Well, first I'm going to heal uh, night, Nightshade up. Uh, there's really not enough time to go deep into any skill trees against Barnacle. There's just not enough days 
So, I am going to try to up my attack by one, uh, but I failed. All right, so we got day number seven encounter. Uh, hanging with the guys. It's hard to opt out of game night when you're hanging upside down and a pair of kobolds are forcing you to either play with them or pick an appendage for their supper. The other small problem is that the game in question entails dangling by my ankles as I fight to the death with two foul-mouthed Mulner traders strung up next to me. The outcome doubles is the game's name. The loser is lunch. This whole situation feels strangely familiar for some reason. If these jerks would only cooperate, we might turn the tables on our captors. Otherwise, I guess we'll see how much damage I can do before the blood to my head knocks me out. Wait a minute. Oh, it's upside down. Because I'm upside down. Gotcha. Um, so the upside down option, batty points, um, which I'm on day seven, so it'd be seven batty points. Place gear lock in lane one, and the first two baddies from the batty queue on adjacent positions. Remove other baddies from the batty queue. So I remove a one point batty. That's good. But the gear lock cannot move, use skill dice, or use loot until three decks is spent, which is basically losing a full turn. To free its feet but you get an extra skill point for that which is good other option offer the traders incentive the molnar quickly formulate a plan your part is loosening its bindings uh solve a four trip two force three lo uh, lock lock or lever lock i guess in three lock picking tips or fewer or you must choose the other choice uh, if you have loot, the dragon scale, or the Macalagish pipe, you may give it to the Molnir and shuffle encounter Molnir adventure reference guide into your encounter deck. Otherwise, shuffle special encounter a mountain out of a Molnir hill into your reference or into your deck. But see, the problem is I'm on day seven. I have to get this uh, progress point because I have to be at five progress points on day eight to fight Barnacle. So. This one, with two uses of the Calabish pipe to uh, get, take care of those lock mechanisms, I think is pretty, pretty definite I could do that. This other one, I'm not so sure. My luck has not been very good on combat this, this game. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go the safe route. I'm going to go no, no combat. <laughs> So I need to get out my lock picking dice here. I don't get to use these very often because I usually don't select trove loot. So, um, and I can use the McAlvish pipe up to two times. That is cut. So. I had to even look up what this symbol was because I don't do it very often. So I can convert one of these others to a, another uh, lock type. So that, let's go ahead and use my McAlvish pipe before I go ahead and make that choice. So five. All right, this is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my five to this T. So I take that out with the McAlvish pipe. Then I'm going to use this to change the one L into an F, which knocks out the second part. So now I just have to have a 3L that I need to worry about. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use the pipe again a second time because I'm not going to need to use the McAlvish pipe again because I'm not going to have any trove loot this game. Uh, so I can reduce by three or by one, but I got the 3L anyways. He's staring at us. Let's go load up. Anything you can put in your pot? And I got a plus one. So I have successfully unlocked the lock. 
um, which means I, I beat the encounter, which means I get a skill point and I get a loot. I get huckleberries. Um, so, get rid of that. Heal an adjacent gear lock for four points or heal yourself for three. I'm going to put three on this guy so that I remember that I've got it. Otherwise, I will forget. And then I will regret it later. So, that's where we're at. And now, we're on day eight. Oh, I need to get my skill point. Uh, well, I am just getting beaten to death. And... I think movement may be very important on this particular mission because I have to kill all of his tentacles before they destroy my raft, if I remember correctly. Um, let's take a look here. Tentacles one to four. Add barnacle to the bottom of the batty queue. Placed uh, only barnacle must be defeated for encounter success. Okay. Hmm. So maybe I just need to be able to kill him. Huh. Let's go ahead and try to get, you know what, let's just do a dex. Yep, we're just gonna do a dex. All right, so, we have tentacle one, two, three, and four, and then he's on the bottom of the batty queue. So we're gonna go one, which has one hit point. Two, which has conveniently two hit points. I bet you three has three hit points. And it does. Three has three hit points. And four, you'll never guess, has four hit points. Oh, that's my health. Don't be stealing that. All right, so let's roll to see where they go. Number one, it's cocked. It's gonna go to four. Two, it's gonna go to two. Three, would go to one. Uh, and four, it's gonna go to five. Okay, so one is initiative three, two is initiative two, three is initiative three, and four is initiative four. Let's see what we get here. And I'm going at five because I do not have any damage taken, I will not get Nightshade to start. Okay. So I think my plan before, which was to throw daggers at this guy, still works. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. I'm going to try to kill this guy with attack dice, kill that guy with my darts, throwing knives, 
and then these guys are going to wreck my raft. That's the best chance I got. Okay, so... My turn. Dead. Dead. So that's two tentacles down. And that is those two dice off. So now this guy, because there's no one adjacent. So as a Krellid, it will move to the next Krellin starting spot. One goes to two. And then it's going to attack me. And it attacks with one attack and one defense. And it's careless. It's careless. It takes a point of damage. That's nice. And then it does one point of damage to me. Which is also actually nice because that gets Nightshade the next turn. So this guy is on five, so he's going to go to six. Um, let's see what that does. All right, so he's going to attack with two, and he will wreck a piece of raft here. Okay. Um, so he's going to come in, and um, I think I can swap. Yeah, so I could use my backup plan to flip over to here and then put more to bear on that. He's going to come in. And he's got eight life. He's going to go to position one, um, but he's a, bat, a tyrant, so he's going to go to the top. Which, um, since they both came in at the top, I think it's player's choice which goes first, so I'm going to go ahead and have him go first. If that's wrong, let me know in the comments. I'm sure I've messed up lots of stuff here. So, uh, Nightshade is going to go. He's going to attack tentacle number three. Doing three damage, which is enough to kill him. And so, then we're going to go to Barnacle. Uh, Barnacle has nobody around him, so he's going to move to the next one up. It's going to be number two. And he is going to need his tyrant die, which I did not get out. I forgot to do that. Okay, tentacle wrap. Target the strongest opposing unit adjacent to a tentacle, which I don't have one. Place target on any available Krellin space. Okay, so I, I lucked out there. And he did one damage to me. And he gets one there. To the deep, at the end of each round, if Barnacle is on the battle mat and there are still tentacles in the BQ, Barnacle will leave the battle at, to the bottom of the BQ. Okay, but he, there are no tentacles in the BQ, so he's going to stay out there. So, I wonder, I think I just pile in and I just try to just outright just assault him. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So, I've got 
three, four, five dice to use. And um, I'm going to go ahead and heal up to my full using my huckleberries. I'm your huckleberry. And so one to take out the armor. Two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. So one took out the armor, then three more. All right, so three more. Uh, plus a bleed die. And that's that. Okay, so next up, going to be this guy. Um, he'll move up to the next, which will be down here, actually. And then he's going to make his attacks. So he is going to wreck another piece of raft here, which I think the raft is good until I get five damage on it. I believe. Yeah, when the fifth wreckage chip, that's when it goes away. All right. So, next up, we're going to go Nightshade uh, attacking Barnacle. Uh, Nightshade does not have a backup plan. Does one damage. Okay. Barnacle goes. He takes a point of damage from Bleed. Down to three already. And then he is going to attack. He'll attack the Mightiest, so he's going to attack Duster. Luckily, I didn't uh, bring back the Tentacle again. So um, he's going to do a point of damage. And he's going to get an armor. And that's his turn. So now I am going to go with Duster. She's got five dice. She can really only do three things with it, though, or four things with it. So that's what she's going to do. She has four damage. Uh, minus one for his armor. It's three damage. Which is enough to finish off Barnacle. Barnacle has been defeated by the Mighty Duster. Uh, Duster definitely is a tricksy gear lock. All right, so uh, finished up our adventure against Barnacle with Duster and Nightshade. Uh, as always, Too Many Bones is a very swingy game, especially in solo mode. Uh, I lost two encounters in this playthrough, and I actually uh, played it through two other times that I lost the battle. So, um, so this was actually the third attempt at this, uh, to get you guys uh, on a victory here. So, um, sometimes you just draw the wrong five-point baddie in a solo game, and uh, you get the wrong combination of skills that you're not ready for and you're just done but uh, it was a good time uh, enjoyed all my playthroughs and uh, Barnacle uh, is interesting because by the time you actually get to fight him he is not that big of a deal his tentacles um, can be a pain and um, I kind of plan for that with my throwing knives and with nightshade um, but uh, as far as his one attack die and one defense die and, and his, his tyrant die is not that impressive either. So he wasn't really the problem. More so the problem was the baddies that exist in the Undertow set and the encounters that exist in the Undertow set were uh, a little bit uh, more challenging than the ones that I had uh, played before. Maybe that's just luck of the draw. I got some, some poor draws. 
but uh, the um, the overall feel for Duster was that um, even at seven hit points, I never felt safe, and even at uh, five decks at the end, I never felt like I had enough dexterity to do what I wanted to do. If Duster kind of feels like she wants to be Nugget, but is not quite Nugget. Um, she traded some of Nugget's reliability for a little bit of Tink's uh, allies, and I don't think it was a good trade. That being said, uh, thematically and um, rule of cool, uh, Duster is a lot of fun. Um, you get the bleed, you get the daggers that you can throw, um, you've got a wolf for goodness sake, and in a longer playthrough, whenever you can take the time to build up Nightshade, Nightshade can be a mammoth in itself. And that's the route that I, I generally like to go when I've played Duster in the past. I've played 10-Day uh, Tyrants and, and took some time to build up Nightshade, and that's worked out pretty good. I wanted to try something a little different this time, and, and that might not have been a good plan, but uh, it, it eventually worked out. So... But uh, I wanted to get a game of Too Many Bones in. I uh, hadn't played in a little bit, hadn't started through the Undertow Batty Tyrants yet, and wanted to get that started for you. And just going through my top games and also uh, having visited the Chip Theory Games website and, and uh, ordered all the promo packs for Too Many Bones got me excited about it again. And, and of course, talking about it being my, uh, my favorite game of, uh, of all of my board games. So... Um, Next time we come back, uh, I'll probably play another game of Shadows of Brimstone as my guess. Uh, got some new stuff for that too, so I want to put that to good use. But uh, until next time, uh, this has been Justin from Books, Bricks, and Boards. Good gaming, and God bless.